A Catholic religious order is a religious order of the Catholic Church. According to the 1983 Code of Canon Law, they form part of a category of Catholic religious institutes. Subcategories are canons regular canons and canonesses regular who recite the divine office and serve a church and perhaps a parish, monastics monks or nuns living and working in a monastery and reciting the divine office, mendicants friars or religious sisters who lie from alms, recite the divine office, and, in the case of the men, participate in apostolic activities, and clerks regular priests who take religious vows and have a very active apostolic life. Original Catholic religious orders of the Middle Ages include the Order of St. Benedict, the Carmelites, the Order of Friars Minor, the Dominican Order, and the Order of St. Augustine. As such, also the Teutonic Order may qualify, today mainly monastic. In the past, what distinguished religious orders from other institutes was the classification of the vows that the members took in religious profession as solemn vows. According to this criterion, the last religious order founded was that of the Bethlehem Brothers in 1673. Nevertheless, in the course of the 20th century some religious institutes outside the category of orders obtained permission to make solemn vows, at least of poverty, thus blurring the distinction. <laughs> Essential distinguishing mark Solemn vows were originally considered indissoluble. As noted below, dispensations began to be granted in later times, but originally not even the Pope could dispense from them. If for a just cause a religious order was expelled, the vow of chastity remained unchanged and so rendered invalid any attempt at marriage, the vow of obedience obliged in relation, generally, to the bishop rather than to the religious superior, and the vow of poverty was modified to meet the new situation but the expelled religious could not, for example, will any goods to another, and goods which came to him reverted at his death to his institute or to the Holy See." <laughs> Weakening in 1917 The 1917 Code of Canon Law reserved the name, "...religious order," for institutes in which the vows were solemn, and used the term, "...religious congregation." or simply, "...congregation", for institutes with simple vows. The members of a religious order for men were called, "...regulars", those belonging to a religious congregation were simply, "...religious", a term that applied also to regulars. For women, those with simple vows were called, "...sisters", with the term, "...none", reserved in canon law for those who belonged to an institute of solemn vows, even if in some localities they were allowed to take simple vows instead. However, it abolished the distinction according to which solemn vows, unlike simple vows, were indissoluble. It recognized no totally indispensable religious vows and thereby abrogated for the Latin Church the special consecration that distinguished «orders» from «congregations» while keeping some juridical distinctions, in practice, even before 1917 dispensations from solemn religious vows were being obtained by grant of the Pope himself, while departments of the Holy See and superiors specially delegated by it could dispense from simple religious vows, the 1917 Code maintained a juridical distinction by declaring invalid any marriage attempted by solemnly professed religious or by those with simple vows to which the Holy See had attached the effect of invalidating marriage, while stating that no simple vow rendered a marriage marriage invalid, except in the cases in which the Holy See directed otherwise. Thus members of «orders» were barred absolutely from marriage, and any marriage they attempted was invalid. Those who made simple vows were obliged not to marry, but if they did break their vow, the marriage was considered valid. Another difference was that a professed religious of solemn vows lost the right to own property and the capacity to acquire temporal goods for himself or herself, but a professed religious of simple vows, while being prohibited by the vow of poverty from using and administering property, kept ownership and the right to acquire more, unless the constitutions of the religious institute explicitly stated the contrary. After publication of the 1917 Code, many institutes with simple vows appealed to the Holy See for permission to make solemn vows. The Apostolic Constitution Sponsa Christi of 21 November 1950 made access to that permission easier for nuns in the strict sense, though not for religious institutes dedicated to apostolic activity. Many of these latter institutes of women then petitioned for the solemn vow of poverty alone. 
Towards the end of the Second Vatican Council, superiors general of clerical institutes and abbots president of monastic congregations were authorized to permit, for a just cause, their subjects of simple vows who made a reasonable request to renounce their property except for what would be required for their sustenance if they were to depart. These changes resulted in a further blurring of the previously clear distinction between «orders» and «congregations», since institutes that were founded as «congregations» began to have some members who had all three solemn vows or had members that took a solemn vow of poverty and simple vows of chastity and obedience. <inaudible> <inaudible> Further changes in 1983 The current Code of Canon Law, which came into force in 1983, maintains the distinction between solemn and simple vows, but no longer makes any distinction between their juridical effects, including the distinction between «orders» and «congregations». It has accordingly dropped the language of the 1917 Code and uses the single term «religious institute» which appears nowhere in the 1917 Code to designate all such institutes of consecrated life alike, thus the Church no longer draws the historical distinction between religious «orders» and «congregations». It applies to all such institutes the single name «religious institute» and the same rules of canon law. While solemn vows once meant those taken in what was called a religious order. Today, in order to know when a vow is solemn it will be necessary to refer to the proper law of the institutes of consecrated life. Religious order and religious institute tend indeed to be used now as synonyms, and canon lawyer Nicholas Coffardi, commenting on the fact that the canonical term is religious institute, can write that religious order is a colloquialism. Authority structure A religious order is characterized by an authority structure where a superior general has jurisdiction over the order's dependent communities. An exception is the Order of Saint Benedict which is not a religious order in this technical sense, because it has a system of «independent houses», meaning that each abbey is autonomous. However, the constitutions governing the order s global independent houses and its distinct congregations of which there are 20 were approved by the pope likewise according to rank and authority the abbot primates position with regard to the other abbots throughout the world is to be understood rather from the analogy of a primate in a hierarchy than from that of the general of an order like the dominicans and jesuits the canons regular of saint augustine are in a situation similar to that of the benedictines they are organized in eight «congregations», each headed by an «abbot general», but also have an «abbot primate of the confederated canons regular of St. Augustine», and the Cistercians are in thirteen «congregations», each headed by an «abbot general» or an «abbot president», but do not use the title of «abbot primate». List of institutes of consecrated life in the Annuario Pontificio The Annuario Pontificio lists for both men and women the institutes of consecrated life and the like that are of pontifical right, those that the Holy See has erected or approved by formal decree. For the men, it gives what it now calls the historical juridical list of precedents. The arrangement in this list dates back many decades. It is found, for instance, in the 1964 edition of the Annuario Pontificio, pp. 807–870, where the heading is, "...states of perfection of pontifical right for men". In the 1969 edition the heading has become, "...religious and secular institutes of pontifical right for men", a form it kept until 1975 inclusive. Since 1976, when work was already advanced on revising the Code of Canon Law, the list has been qualified as historical juridical and still includes as orders the following institutes for men of the Latin Church, while not distinguishing between orders and congregations in the case of the Eastern Catholic Churches and Latin Church women. Within that long list, a relatively small section is devoted to Latin Rite orders for men. 
The 2012 Annuario Pontificio, which devotes 19 pages to this information on Latin Rite orders for men, gives 35 pages to Latin Rite congregations for men, 7 to Eastern orders, religious congregations and societies of apostolic life for men, and 198 pages to more concise information on religious institutes for women. See also Topic Topic References Topic Topic External Links Topic Topic Official Websites Topic. The Congregation for Institutes of Consecrated Life and Societies of Apostolic Life. Vatican.va. Concerning religious institutes in the Code of Canon Law 1983. Vatican.va. Topic. Acronyms and denominations. Topic. Catholic Orders at Curly. Topic Lists Topic List of abbreviations unofficial Retrieved July twenty second, twenty eighteen Alphabetical order of entities in the Diocese of Rome Diocese of Rome Portal in Italian Retrieved July twenty second, twenty eighteen Vocation Network Searchable Directory of Men S and Women S Catholic Religious Communities Vision Vocation Guide Digital Edition Comprehensive Guide of Men S and Women S Religious Communities in the US and Canada with links and vocation opportunities <laughs>